Hello, BookTube. All right, we're continuing with my in-person library tour. No more library tour of the lost. And because we're now looking at my physical shelves again, I am once again up on a footstool. <laughs> I'm not sure that the Richardson family would have let me get up on a footstool at the old house in Vermont. But here we are to continue where we left off. So you've got a bunch of Library of the Lost, or books that are on the phone that I don't have anymore. Now we'll go back to the books that I do have. <laughs> so we'll do, we'll just do a shelf for now. Uh, just take my mind off my woes. <laughs> so we'll start with Bern Heinrich. This is Ravens in Winter. Uh, he is a great natural historian, a great writer about birds, and this is, in my opinion, his best book. Uh, ravens are not seriously inconvenienced by most levels of winter, uh, they, and they're fascinating beings. They fascinated him right from teenagers, and this is a fantastic study of what of what they're like. Now, I want to deal with the ergonomics here without catastrophe. We don't have to do much, because the rest of these can stay on the shelf. Okay, this, no, this next one is an, an oddity. It was never actually intended for commercial sale. Uh, this is Gone for the Day by Ned Smith. See, just a... It was a... It was a he was a columnist for years and years for a magazine called Game News, which I'm not sure is in print anymore, and which I deplored at the time, and I still do, going out into the wilderness with high-powered weapons in order to murder people you've never met who aren't doing you any harm. I, of course, deplore that. Uh, but his column it was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And this collects that column, plus lots of really great illustrations just all throughout. Uh, so as, as a celebration of nature, which is what you know, hunters always say they're doing. <laughs> they, uh, typically speaking, uh, a celebration doesn't leave dead bodies behind unless it's a Klingon wedding. Uh, but for as a celebration of nature, it's an absolutely delightful book. If, it, if there are copies out there for you to get and you like nature writing, it's the strangest place to find it, but it's well worth it. Uh, okay, then we have an old black and white picture book, Around the World in 2000 Pictures. Uh, which is just, that's just what it is. It's just you taking you from one spot to another in nature, but mostly in cities uh, all around the world. High definition black and white photos. Not uh, the kind of travel guide that exists today. A uh, thing like this was done, this was from Doubleday. This was probably in the 1950s. Uh, a thing like this was done under the assumption that you probably would not be visiting the places that are listed here. Uh, 1959. Uh, the world travel is just starting to open up, junket travel, cruise ships, that sort of thing were just starting to open up. But most people got this thing as a substitute for the real thing. They still went to, to Niagara Falls or Canopy Lake Park instead. Uh, oh, great. Okay, this is by Matthias Bostrom. This is From Holmes to Sherlock. This is the paperback uh, of his great book about the cultural history of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, from page to stage to screen and all that sort of stuff. Uh, there have been books like this, but nothing has ever approached this. For how comprehensive it is and also for how great it is it's a fantastic reading experience and uh it comes with a blurb uh by yours truly to that effect <laughs> so, uh, if you are a holmes fan if you're if you uh have a shelf of holmes editions and also maybe some holmes pastiche stuff you can't be without this book it is it, it, matthias bostrom actually managed to write an indispensable holmes book which is a rare and rare thing to do uh what is this next? okay this is richardson wright is next this is an older book this is probably from the 1930s 1939 this is the gardener's bed book uh which is just a collection of brief uh reflections on the art of gardening throughout history and the present day uh, arranged by month so that when you have this on your bedside table or your nightstand and you are reading to you know a few entries in winter and you are actually in winter the ref the entries will tend to reflect what your garden you state of your garden is like this was one of the uh one of the only benefits, of the, one of the only positive side effects of the flirtation that I had with starting a garden of my own. Uh, no garden actually got started, <laughs> but I, it opened my mind a lot more than it ever had been to great gardening literature. It turns out there's a world of great gardening literature out there uh, going back centuries. So I now those books I would have, at, let, for instance, used bookstores like the Brattle Bookshop here in Boston, I would have completely not seen them. I would My eyes would have passed over them without noticing them at all. Now I notice them, and I've got a great deal of pleasure out of some of the things that I've picked up. Uh, okay, this next one was a present. This was a gift from uh, Sarah at the Bookish Knitter, my sister from another mister. Great romance booktube channel. Um, this is Naughty Brits. Not the Naughty Bits, but Naughty Brits, uh, which I saw on her channel. This is a UK edition, I, and uh, I love a lot of the authors who are in here, and uh, I'm okay with the cover art. <laughs> I saw it on her channel and thought, 
well, I kind of want that. Uh, and it well, it turned out it was scarce, and she was she was kind enough to send me a copy all the way from uh, Canada. Ah, okay. Uh, this next one's a bit of bit of a lesson in humility for for a hasty critic. This is Jerusalem by Alan Moore. Massive novel. This is the beautiful American trade paperback release. I thought the American hardcover release was hideous, just as all American hardcover releases are. I thought it was ugly. Uh, and I read it, and I don't know, I don't think it was the cover that really did it. I think it was just that I didn't, I wasn't paying enough attention to what's going on in this book. Because my first reading of this book was uh, lackluster, bordering on negative. Uh, I thought it was massively self-indulgent, just a giant piece of self-indulgence. And I thought no more about it. And then I got the trade paperback. I think I hauled it on this channel years and years ago. I got the trade paperback and noticed right away what a pretty thing it is, that it's so much. It makes up for so much of the ugliness of the American hardcover. And then I sat down and really reread the thing, and it is brilliant. I was, I did, I missed most of, if not all, of the brilliance on my first time through. A massive, tangled, hyper-complex work that deserves it deserves your your attention if you're looking for a gigantic fantasy chunkster to read. Uh, that's one to definitely consider. Uh, okay, then this next one is a crappy condition uh, version of a book that's in here a few times. I really ought to pull all these out and put them together. This is William Service's book, Owl. We go from huge to very small. This is a tiny little nonfiction uh, a memoir about him taking in a tiny little owl who uh, command started to command their whole their whole household and gave them a real insight into what at least this one little imperious being was like. Uh, and it's wonderful. It's very, very uh, undemonstrative in its prose. Uh, it's, not, it's not, there are no grand sweeping insights into life and the universe and everything in here. Instead, it, it's very down to business, but that will affect you even more. And I have a number of copies of this book in this room. I really should find them all. And put them together so that I know how many I have. Uh, this next one's from the University of Chicago Press, a rare instance in which an American publishing house did a reprint that was perfect and with which I vocally agreed. Uh, and that was this. They reprinted The Last Hurrah by Edwin O'Connor in this lovely trade paperback, which as far as I know is still in print. This will have the sheet in it. Yes, uh, this came out in March of 2016. This came out right around the time that we first were starting to talk to each other. Uh, and I bet this is that the University of Chicago keeps this in print. This is Edwin O'Connor's great novel, one of the great American novels of politics, one of the great American comic novels of the second half of the 20th century about an old mayoral candidate, an old, an old uh, candidate for political office who decides on one last hurrah, one last try to win an election. Uh, and it's it's a deeply, deeply textured, non-judgmental view of what old-style Boston ward politics could be like, the good and the bad. Uh, and it's funny. <laughs> there are scenes, whole extended scenes in here that'll just have you rollicking. Uh, okay, this next one is uh, is also a really great book. This is The Library Book by Susan Orlean in paperback, again with the uh, the Christian Science Monitor blurb that you really want to make sure that your book is well approved. <laughs> this is not just the story of a famous library that caught fire and the, the true crime case about who did it and is that case really, do we really know who did it, but also a broader study of why we love libraries and what a miracle they are. And I didn't at first think those two would go together, but they do. <laughs> this is just a great writer, so they do. If you love your library, if you love books about libraries, there are plenty of them in this room, and you've somehow managed to miss this, then... Uh, get a copy because you're going to love it. You're going to read it over and over again. Okay, then this, we have a little thing here so small that the tucked in reviews are spilling out. This is Eric Vuillard. This is The Order of the Day, on which he, it's a very tiny work of history, but incredibly insightful, where he brackets two things, a meeting of German high financiers and industrialists in, uh, in the early 1930s, making the, the insane decision to finance the political ambitions of Adolf Hitler. And bracketed with that is uh, is the Anschluss, is, is Germany taking over Austria in the end of the 1930s. And you're supposed to, this author is obviously very spare in his narrative, but he's, he wants to show you a picture of an age encompassed in two essential, very concentrated events. It works wonderfully, just wonderfully. Um, okay, this next one I have praised many times. This is by Thomas Palmer. This is Landscape with Reptile. 
uh, rattlesnakes in an urban world. And a large part of this is about the rattlesnake population in the Blue Hills Reservation, which is within sight of Boston on a clear day. Uh, it's it, but a, a larger part of the book, really, when you get when you really sink into it, is about rattlesnakes themselves, their natural history, their biology, uh, a couple of the rather lengthy and detailed descriptions of what rattlesnake venom actually does to its victims that you will find in these pages are not for the faint of heart, <laughs> if you, especially if you've ever been bitten by a rattlesnake, as I have been many times. Uh, it, but it ends up being beautiful. This is actually a, a very, very affectionate uh, portrait of an animal that does not want human affection and that no human should, in their right mind, ever become affectionate with. It's a very affectionate portrait of them and their place in the wild. You know, just leave them there <laughs> and let them be, because in their own way, they are stunningly beautiful. Uh, okay, the star of this book already knows that she's stunningly beautiful. This is uh, Julie Zickfuss's book, Saving Gemma. Uh, a, again, a bird adoption book. What have we had two on this shelf so far? This is a, a bird adoption book, a family that adopts a little bird. Uh, they, they are an industry unto themselves, and they can be done poorly or well, as can any kind of book. And this is done extremely well. I don't know for sure off the top of my head if our very own Olive at a book Olive is blurbed on the paperback. I, if she is, then I will swap that out for this hardcover. I got this uh, from the publisher. Do we have a date on this? I still have a pub sheet in it. Uh, September of 2019. I don't know. I, have, I never go to retail bookstores really anymore. So Olive may be blurbed on the paperback of this. That would be wonderful. If she were, I would definitely take it over the hardcover. Uh, and then finally, for this shelf, we'll end up with the trade paperback that I um, mentioned a few times. I mentioned, I mentioned it just recently in a science fiction, in a fantasy top ten list. This is the beautiful hard, uh, paperback edition that, who did this? Uh, Specter, Spectrum Fantasy did this, of the Viraconium stories and novels of M. John Harrison. Lovely thing with an embossed cover, the deckled edges, the French flaps, they've got 1004, uh, which was the store number of the Barnes & Noble where this showed up on the break room table as an advance copy back when I didn't get many advance copies from publishers. I snapped it right up. Nobody at the store had any idea what this was, except for the handful of people who had been introduced to it by me. These are great high fantasy stories. They are absolutely fantastic. And this volume is still in print, as far as I know. So you can get a beautiful volume of all of these. Uh, of course, there is no Barnes & Noble 1004 anymore. <laughs> that store closed. It's just gone. That's just a memory. I wonder how many books uh, here in my library have that stamped on the page. They did that. The 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 idiot, vicious managers put that there uh, to keep it sort of in possession of the store, to keep it in circulation. Utterly ridiculous. Nobody at 1004 wanted this other than me. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm glad that I have it because it's it's a rare, another, like like with the, the uh, Last Hurrah, it's a rare example of a great, well-chosen modern reprint. Something I'm happy to see uh, in its, you know, the, being alive again in bookstores. Uh, so that's it. That is uh, Footstool Territory. I'm pretty sure I can do tomorrow's video without the, stu the Footstool. I'm going to try because it's making me mighty nervous. Uh, but that is uh, the resumption of our library tour. Uh, and I'm going to wrap this up for now, uh, but I'll be back. Thank you, BookTube.